Image copyright Reuters image caption Emerson Mnangagwa has promised a new democracy for Zimbabwe Zimbabwe's new president Emerson Mnangagwa has named his cabinet, appointing senior military figures to high-profile positions. Critics have said that it has dashed hopes of change in the country. Mr. Mnangagwa was inaugurated as president last week. He took over from Robert Mugabe who had been in power for 37 years. Mr. Mugabe stepped down after the army took control of the country, following a power struggle in the ruling party. Thousands of people celebrated Mr. Mugabe's resignation as they hoped the failed economy would improve. Some had hoped that President Mnangagwa would appoint members of the opposition to his cabinet to form a transitional government until elections next year, but this did not happen. What has been the reaction? The appointments led government critic Tendai Bidi to suggest that Zimbabweans were wrong to have hoped for change. Up until now, we had given the putsch the benefit of the doubt. We did so in the genuine, perhaps naive view that the country could actually move forward. We crave change, peace, stability in our country. How wrong, we were, he said. Image caption Mini Zimbabwean celebrated the ousting of Robert Mugabe Wolf Mbanga, a Zimbabwean journalist who lives in exile in South Africa, told the BBC that the new Minister of Agriculture Prince Shiri was not known for his love of democracy. A minister who served in Mr. Mugabe's government, Jonathan Moyo, said the changes meant that SANF, the party which has governed Zimbabwe since independence in 1980, was dead and the military was now in charge. Newspaper owner Trevor N. Cube said the cabinet was very disappointing. Largely the same people that caused this crisis have been recycled. The honeymoon comes to an end and reality dawns. His concern seems to have been rewarding those who brought him to power and SANF unity, he said. Who are the most controversial new cabinet members? Image copyright Dua Mavhinga Sibu Siso Moyo, the general who became the face of the recent military takeover, is the new foreign minister. In his announcement, he was at pains to deny that the military takeover was a coup so some will criticize his promotion to the cabinet. He holds a PhD in international relations and at one point was the leader of the elite military unit, known as the Green Berets Squad. The head of Zimbabwe's Air Force, Prince Shiri, was named the Minister of Agriculture and Land Affairs. He is notorious for having led the military operation against those seen as opponents of Mr. Mugabe in Matabel Island in the early 1980s. The operation, led by the North Korean-trained 5th Brigade of the Army, resulted in the killing of an estimated 20,000 civilians. As lands minister, he will presumably be in charge of Zimbabwe's controversial land reform program. This saw the seizure of thousands of farms owned by the white minority which had previously been in charge of the country. Critics say this wrecked Zimbabwe's once thriving economy and led millions of Zimbabweans to leave the country to find work. Where can I read more? Who else got a job? Aside from Marsh Gen Moyo and Air Marshal Shiri, leaders of the powerful War Veterans Association, who pushed for Mr. Mugabe to go after the military intervention, also got cabinet jobs. Chris Mavangwa, who heads the group, is now in charge at the Information Ministry. Critics say that Mr. Manangagwa has rewarded those whose actions led to him becoming president. Why did the military intervene? There was a power struggle over who might replace the 93-year-old president with Mr. Manangagwa and Mr. Mugabe's wife, Grace, on opposite sides. Mr. Manangagwa was accused of plotting to take power and Mr. Mugabe sacked him as vice president. Media playback is unsupported on your device. Media caption Young Zimbabweans We need fairness not corruption. Mr. Manangagwa fled Zimbabwe and the military intervened. On the 14th of November, military vehicles rolled into Zimbabwe's capital, Harare, detaining Mr. Mugabe and placing him under house arrest. He agreed to resign and Mr. Manangagwa returned to a hero's welcome and was made president. Mr. Manangagwa has been part of the country's ruling elite for decades, having been Minister of Defense, Security and Justice. Despite pledging a new democracy for Zimbabwe, Mr. Manangagwa is still associated by many with some of the worst atrocities committed under ZANF. What's next? The two new vice presidents have not been appointed yet. The BBC's Shenge Nioka in Harare says all eyes are on the general who led the military takeover Gen Constantino Chiwenga. Zimbabwean commentators are waiting to see whether he will be rewarded with the vice presidency.